Hey everybody, welcome back to the Blue Shakalaka Podcast. I'm your host, Tiffany, and I'm joining my co-host, Pia. I have nothing to say. Nothing to say. Well, this is going to be a very short episode. Uh... I'll have two banana daiquiris, one mango, a slow gin fizz, one slippery nipple, and for me, a screaming orgasm on the beach with extra sugar on the rim. Yum! Oh, I, I mean two brewskis. Yeah, two brewskis with that or whatever he said. I can't remember. I can't remember exactly what he said. <laughs> well, um, happy holidays, M- Merry Kwanzaa, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, yeah. M- Merry Quimus, uh, Bonquisha, all of that good stuff. You know, it's, it's not Christmas until you hear the Bonquisha song, and I haven't heard. I have to actually actively go search for it now that I no longer live in Mississippi. Oh yeah, because that's just a. It'll just be on the radio. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's just a local thing. I might add a little snippet of it in this book. <laughs> We're going to go to jail. Well, probably. Yeah. Um, copyright infringement on a song by Otis and Bonquisha. Well, we <laughs> are here this week for our holiday series, um, and we are reviewing 2017's Better Watch Out. Um, wait, don't, don't give me that face. Don't give me that face. Don't give me that face. I can see you, and it's not nice. So I'm going to read the synopsis for this movie. Um, on a quiet suburban street, a babysitter must defend a 12-year-old boy from intruders, only to discover it's far from a normal home invasion. <laughs> so this really isn't uh, scary, I guess. It's kind of like a thriller slasher type of movie. Um, oh my god, why are you sneering at me? Because <laughs> because even like all the... Um all the reviews, all the like, you know, synopsis, they don't tell you what happens. So they kept They're the secret. They're not supposed to. They kept the secret very, very well. Um, oh. Did you please tell me you did not drop the wine? No, did I dropped drop- a lamp. <laughs> oh, okay. I was like, did you just drop that red wine on the carpet? Oh my gosh. Uh, how'd you know I have carpet? You trying to say I'm poor? Is that a poor thing? No, I'm just kidding. I have oh, that was- <laughs> no, no, I thought. Look at my chair, look at my chair. Cause usually with, I hate you, usually with apartments, if you stay upstairs, they have carpet. So you don't like make too much noise for your neighbors. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Um, well, so, um, I guess since this was my pick, I'll go ahead and get into it. So we start in this, um, suburban idyllic neighborhood. It's so beautiful. It's Christmas. I think they're playing joy to the world. The Lord has come. So they're playing all the Christmas songs, getting you in the mood for the holiday. And we see Ashley, who is our our, our main character. She's driving in the car and she's driving all reckless because for some reason she doesn't know how to talk on the phone and drive. I'm like, it's 2017. We should have had a speakerphone by then, right? Mm-hmm. Ox cord, I- Bluetooth. The little earpiece in the ear? Come on, old man. Like any like, option. Yeah, so she's talking to her mom and she tells her mom that she is, um, she has to babysit for the learners tonight and she literally almost gets in a car wreck and um, her mom mentioned somebody named Ricky over the phone and she's like, no, I'm not going to sneak Ricky in. I'm not going to do that. So we're under the assumption that that's her boyfriend. And um, basically, you know, she's on her way to babysit this big ass 12 year old kid. I thought he was like 15 when I first saw him. I <laughs> did not think he was 12 until they like said it in the movie. I said, what? So so after we meet Ashley, you know, obviously this is our final girl. We got her. And um, then we skip to the house, the beautiful house, and we see Garrett and Luke. Um, Luke is sitting there reading uh, 10 Ways to Make a Girl Queef from a Cosmo magazine or something of that nature. And Garrett's just like, you're never going to get her. You're five years younger than her. And he's like, well, my parents are five years apart in age. And he's like, and Garrett's like, (laughs) you're 12, she's 17. This is never going to work out. And we find that they're talking about Ashley. So Luke has a, you know, a little childhood crush on Ashley. And he seems like, you know, the sweetest, the sweetest kid. His friend Garrett seems kind of like a rebel. He was the kid that got the shit smashed on his face in, um, 
uh what was that movie called the visit I, oh i didn't see that what the f i am is that a down, christmas movie i wrote down bad kids gross teenage boys uh, <laughs> uh, they're actually and, tweens they're and, not even teenagers <laughs> we're also introduced to his parents um his mom i wrote bitchy wife and his dad i wrote weird pedo husband you, you should have wrote Joe Swanson because that's the guy that does the <laughs> that voice is for Joe, Joe Swanson. Swanson. <laughs> that is Joe Swanson. Um, the wife is a complete bitch. She can, she, I don't know. She accuses her husband of sucking cock, and um, and that then was so weird. Like who I was talks like, to their spouse like that? Because he has ornaments. I was like, oh my god. I and mean, then, the ornaments um, were trash. They were I trash, did. but damn, like point like zero to one hundred. And then he has yeah. a weird obsession with the babysitter too. I don't know if you caught that, but I caught it and this is my first time watching the movie. And I was like, does he she, wanna fuck? She knocked on the door and she's like, oh, hello, Mr. Lerner. And he's like, well, don't you look beautiful? I'm like, I'm like I, she just looked like a girl. She like, like a she got nothing girl. on. Like, she looked like she came from doing laundry, if anything. Hello. So I was like, uh, this movie was already turning me off. Y'all see if he can go to hell for this movie. Like, No, um, stop it, stop it. Stop Job. And so exposition, um, the babysitter is moving. She's going to college and she's moving far, far away. Mm -hmm. um, and so the mom is just going over, you know, the basic rundown, even though she's clearly babysat multiple times. And apparently the son, right. sleep, the, apparently, um, the son sleepwalks. So um, she's just letting him know, give him a sleeping pill, put a pin on the door to know if he like leaves his room, you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, Garrett is in the bathroom getting drugs. For an he's, he's he's taking those sleeping pills yeah um he tells the mom he tells mom oh I'm, I'm itchy do you got some cream she's like yeah top shelf first of all i don't know where any of my shit is in my medicine cabinet first <laughs> second of all let me let me go back let me go back let me go back zero of all who the <laughs> fuck has a medicine cabinet nowadays these these high-end apartments have drawers i have one you don't want to live in a low income apartment. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I have that and drawers. And um, I hope they clean. <laughs> so, um, God, this movie. So we see Garrett in there still in the drugs. And we're like, okay, obviously, exposition. The mother talked about the sleeping pills. Garrett took the sleeping pills. You know, they, maybe they're having a farm party later tonight. You know, they're just going to throw a bunch of pills into a bowl. They're going to take them. I don't, that is like the most asinine thing I've ever heard of in my life. Like, I wonder if any kids who have had a farm party before ever got Viagra. Ooh. Could you imagine being like <laughs> 17, I... 18 and, and just like, boop. No, I can't because I always thought they were dumb. Um, I know I don't know if they still do them, though. I feel like they shouldn't considering, you know. Like... No, no, no. I know. Me and you both know somebody that does them. I'm scared because. So I'll tell you about just it don't, later. Okay, so we just don't care about the. Okay, anyway, um, I don't know. I saw <laughs> painkiller, so I'm not doing it. Um, but uh, so uh, parents leave. They go to the party. They'll be back later. Typical, you know, trope where the parents just. What, what party do you go into? That's just anyway. Um, because most adult parties, I don't. Okay, whatever. Unless we're going most to the casino. Adult parties are oh maybe it was like his work work party you know his work christmas party those usually uh tend to be late depending on where you work see i i work for the government we don't get shit like that the lunch the potluck is during work hours <laughs> and now that we are in this state of work we don't get a potluck we get nothing like good luck baby yeah i might send you a ten dollar uh jimmy john's gift card Right. Um, oh, and they leave pizza money. Like, ooh. Um, I hate this movie. And so, um, while uh, they're sitting there and uh, they're like, um, I guess watching scary movies. Mm -hmm. Well, no, you you missed the part. She she sees a spider in the house and she screams and then she tells Luke to come get it. And she tells Luke to kill it and Luke picks it up. He's like. I wouldn't hurt a fly, baby girl. And he takes the spider and lets it free outside. So you're like, oh my God, Luke is the sweetest freaking kid ever. Even though, you know, he has some pedo, some R-A-P-E tendencies, he seems really sweet. Um, yeah. Then he starts drinking wine. No, he pops a cork to champagne and starts taking oh. it to the head. Because it's like, <laughs> obviously, he's not a drinker because champagne tastes like 
probably that protein shake you just finished carbonated water. <laughs> like it's not um, it's not it's strong or anything. It's not like he was drinking wild turkey or anything like that, you know? <laughs> right. Um yeah. So he starts drinking champagne. Um I don't know why they keep leaving the doors open in the house. We just went through this with Scream. Why are y'all leaving the door? Like they're leaving the door wide open. Mm-hmm. And it's cold, it's snowing. So I'm like, anyway, she tells him, you know, stop drinking, stop drinking the champagne. And then she gets freaking freaked out by the spider. So she's drinking champagne. Uh, he's like, oh, I caught you. Now I can have some too. And I'm like, no, I'm seven. I don't know, but it, okay. So they're drinking the champagne. They're watching a scary movie. They're chilling. They're cribbing. Then all of a sudden, um, weird shit keeps happening. Weird noises. Mm-hmm. Weird wind whispers. We're like, you know, clearly something eerie is going on. Yeah, the phone so rings then, and it's ghost face. <laughs> so we get a knock at the door, and uh, it's this weird pizza man who is like so much taller than than the um, what do you call that? The see through hole, the glory hole, and um. People, there we go. The people, and um, she's like, What are you doing here? And he's like, Somebody ordered a pizza, and she's like, I didn't know we didn't order the pizza yet. And so she's like, Look, did you order the pizza? He's like, No, maybe my dad did. And she's like, My god, let me open the door. And so they open the door, and Luke gives him the money, he's like, Keep the change. And but they ordered like um, mushrooms on the pizza, and he doesn't like mushrooms, which. I wouldn't have taken the fucking pizza, but okay. So they have the pizza and then he starts, they just, he starts flirting with her and it's all creepy and oh, weird. Oh, it's I don't so know. gross. It's just something about, I don't know. It's just, I was never into older people because I felt like they stunk. So um, mine was always, it, so when I was younger, I was into older people, but they were always celebrities. They were always okay, yeah. un- that, unattainable yeah. people. It was never somebody down the street. See, it wasn't. First- yeah. My first crush was Bobby Brader, so, but I didn't realize, well, because I was watching Nick and Knight, so I thought Bobby Brady was the same age as me, because I didn't realize that? that Bobby Brady from the Brady Bunch. So I didn't, I thought he was my age. I didn't realize he, like, the Brady Bunch was, like, old at that time. We're going to move past this, and we're never going to talk about it again. Um, So, no, it, but yeah, it, <laughs> he had braces. <laughs> Nobody likes Bobby Brady. You're fired. It's naked night. I don't know what to tell you. Anywho, you your severance papers. <laughs> here she come. Here come Nola being a part of the part of the scene. I'm so sick of this Um, just close the door. Um, and so they, he's just flirting with her, very weird, like, and he's like giving all these like, you know, baby, baby. He's like very Johnny Bravo. Like that's the best way I can describe it. Um, but you know, and- Ash- Ashley fucks up because she tells him. If oh no! Were- you you bored? You heard her? <laughs> no, I was, no, I was like, oh god! Like y'all talking about this shit? She told him, "If I were your age, I'd date you." You do not and that, that's, say that to people. That is weird flirting. That's what I'm saying. Like it's just ugh. anyway. Um, and so that's when he tries to like kiss her. And- he tries to kiss her in a very aggressive way. He tries to grab her face. Yeah, and I'm like, and she's like, ah! So, you know, she's like, dude, She, she, she should have screamed, like, really loud. She should have yeah. screamed. She used to, like, really, really, like, like shrieked. If and you know so, what I did last Friday the 13th. A screw from behind. And, um, <laughs> so the phone rings, and then, um, I don't know, it's like, she gets all freaked out. It's, like, heavy breathing, and, you know, she gets all scared, and so she's on the phone, and again, the door is open. But wait, she has a Sydney moment. So she gets a call and they're like, and she's like, um, well, what am I doing? How many fingers am I holding up? How many fingers mm-hmm. am I holding up? And I was yeah. like, is this is this scream? Because Sydney did the same thing. She's like, what am I doing? And she was picking in her nose. This is literally a scream uh, ripoff. They're, they're really biting off the screen. <laughs> like, but it happens. There's another part where it happens too. So I was just like, the director or writer probably really, really loved the scream movie. Mm, okay i can feel that um and so she's on the phone she's freaking out she's like give me my phone so i can call the police this bitch he gonna throw the damn phone in the aquarium when i tell you i wanted to turn the movie off i was about to turn the movie off and be like uh you just go and lead and i won't watch the rest of it because that pissed me off because not only did he throw it in the aquarium she's like get the phone she acting like she can't reach down there and get it the phone is just sitting in the aquarium the probability of your phone working after this it's slim to none because like maybe a little drop here maybe a little drop there it's like at the bottom of the tank 
They're acting like it's the fucking aquarium on Deuce Bigelow. <laughs> it is a, you know, 10 gallon aquarium. And first she's like, oh, I can't get my sweater wet. This big house has a dryer. I'm pretty sure you can wash, dry, and fold that shit. Your entire outfit you have on, um, you know, and take it back home with you. And then before they, they get back, yeah. And then there's another knock at, knock at the door, which which breaks her. You know, she just, oh my god, I can't get this phone out of the fish tank. Ah! Like, and she's like, you wait here, don't come. He don't listen to a damn thing she says this whole fucking movie. Mm-hmm. He just following her everywhere. She opened the door. She all scared. Who is it? It's Gary. Arr! Like, oh, what are you guys doing? She's like, was that you? And he's like, no, you know, I didn't go through the, uh, I didn't go through the back door. And so, um, that's when uh, she's like, uh, she goes up, she grabs a knife, and she's like, I'm going upstairs. Y'all stay here. He didn't come behind her. No. <laughs> she's going to investigate a damn noise. Um, and you see that a brick has been thrown through the uh, one, a, a random room in the house because they have just empty fucking rooms and a brick has been thrown through. And she's like, oh my God. That should have been a hint right there. Like, was the window broken? There no, was it was not. There was glass. Oh, they did break the window? Yeah, because yeah, there was oh, glass okay. on the carpet. Okay. Um, okay. They have carpet. So there was glass on the carpet. <laughs> and so that's when they realized, oh Wi-Fi. my God, there's my chair again. The Wi-Fi and the cell service, <laughs> the fact that you shrunk, the Wi-Fi and the cell service has been cut off. And so they're checking the computer, they're checking the phones. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh my God, you know, we don't even see the Wi-Fi anymore. What's going on? What's going on? So they're all freaked out. And so that's when they head back downstairs. And so Garrett comes downstairs and he's like, you guys look. And the brick has a message on it. And it says, you leave, you die. So mm-hmm. what does Garrett do? He runs out the he fucking leaves. back door. <laughs> and, and so he's running out the back door and bam, you see a gunshot, <laughs> you see blood on the snow and Garrett ain't no more. So, mind you, when he's running out of the house, the door is still open. Why have they not closed the door? I wanted to cut this movie off because I don't understand this whole, you're scared, but you're going to leave the door. Like, the door is not unlocked. The door is wide open, people. Right. right. Wide open. You, It's wide open, like you're barbecuing and you just walked into the house to grab some tongs to get the meat off the grill and then you walk back out. That's how wide the doors open. Like, very, like, because he ran out. He didn't have to open it. He ran out. He got shot, and it was done with. Okay, so Garrett's dead. Um, and we don't care, because Garrett looks ugly. Um, and so, so they go looking for the dad's gun. The dad's gun. Um, Luke is like, my dad has a gun. So they go upstairs mm-hmm. looking for the gun. They go up to the attic. Uh, the exposition earlier in the movie she was there when they were watching the horror movie she was screaming at the tv at the uh final girl on the tv saying no don't go in the attic don't go in the attic what's the first thing she does she goes in the attic they're they're, they're, they're attic. Ru- always running upstairs like you know some big breasted girl running upstairs when she should be running out the front door it's insulting they go in the attic they're looking for the gun she fall out the attic them spiders <laughs> fall on her face i was like Yo, it's your neck or a spider. I am scared like, of a lot of things in this world, but I think dying um, <laughs> might be a little stronger. Like, I don't like rats, but I mm. feel if I'm in a life or death situation, I might kick the hell out of a rat to, to, to save my life. I'm not going to sit there. What? There was a scary movie where that happened, where the rats were crawling. What movie was that? I think, was that, was that Texas Willard? Chainsaw Massacre? I don't know, but the rats were crawling on her, but she was hiding and so she couldn't scream. And I was like... Mm bruh <laughs> like and they because uh, uh, i feel like rats bite like even if they're on a human they'll just start biting. they they uh, bite um, and they, they burrow they like to look for heat so that they, they they try to like burrow in your hair and they try to burrow in your crotch in your mouth stop, because they, stop, they're stop, looking stop. for it sorry yeah i don't like rats ah! that's why i hate new york um and so um they uh they find the gun but the intruder is now in the house I don't know mm-hmm. how he gets in the house, but the intruder is there. Probably because they didn't like any fucking doors. Um, and so Lock they're the clothes. <laughs> they're in the uh, I don't know what do you look, look. You just talked about washing and drying, so they're in the um utility room. And so laundry room. <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> I was born in 1952. And so right, what the hell's <laughs> up? It's so, okay, Grandpa. This is when I actually. <laughs> this is when I actually felt something with the movie because did y'all lock my door, and so um, this baby they in utility room 
The intruder opens the door. They right behind the door. I was like, when I tell you I would have died, and then she talking about, no, don't. I'm like, why are you a spring right now? Do you right. know how close he is to you? So the intruder right here, they behind the door. He waving the gun. And the fact that he don't, because I, mm, I don't want to give the killers anything. I don't want to give the killer any, because I feel like the killer maybe listen to the podcast. I don't want to give him any ideas, but I wouldn't have fallen for that. So um, killer peeps in, he don't see nothing. So he closes the door. So they really freaked out. Now they're like, oh my God. So they run, um, they wait for him to, I don't know, walk down the hall. I don't know how they know, how they know he's gone, but they run into um, Lucas's room and they hide in the closet. Here comes the killer. Uh, here comes the intruder. Looking all this, stupid. Here they dumb asses go. They done hit the toy, making all kinds of noise. She done scream because she saw a mask in the closet. Just like kill me shit. Like kill me, kill me. I was over it. This is when I was ready to cut it off for the third time. Um, and so that's when she looks at the killer and she realizes, hey, Luke, isn't that your hat he's wearing? Then she's like, then he starts scratching and she's like, bitch. She busts up out that closet like the killer ain't got no damn gun in his hand. She's talking about, Garrett, is that you? He's talking about, I was masturbating. Oh. And so, um, <laughs> And so he fires one off in her face like Sydney. And Yo, uh, <laughs> I would have came once he took that off and I saw it was him, it would have been fisticuffs. I would have been swinging. I I'm not turning my back on you crazy ass kids. They're kids, but they can still overpower you. And she, Ashley was like, oh, hell no. I'm calling your mama. I'm calling the FBI. I'm calling Uncle Sam. I'm calling President Biden. I'm calling, um, uh, Samuel Jackson, somebody go come over here and regulate Did on you, you motherfuckers. Say President Button, as in Joe Button. I said Biden. Oh, I, okay. I'm glad you said okay. Um, and that's when pump, Luke is like, pump, pump it up. That's when uh, Luke reveals that um, it was all a prank. It was his way of staging a break in so he could be the hero and you know save her life. And she is like, you pathetic, limp dick, small dick, weak little bony ass bitch. Don't you ever play with me no more. And she, you know, she goes off of him. She swings her hair. She heads down the stairs. He walks up to her. He say, hey, Ashley. He punches her in the tits. She falls down the stairs like Madeline Ashton. He just slaps her. But he, she falls down the stairs like Madeline Ashton. I'm thinking she's dead. No, he hits her in the back of the head with the with the gun. You sure he did not slap her across the face? I distinctly remember a slap. Okay, maybe you're right. Because she would have had a wound or something on her face. Yeah. And he falls down the stairs and he's just looking like he has no no emotion on his face and i'm like oh shit ashley did he's like anthony perkins psycho um and so <laughs> and so she wakes up all delirious she's all duct taped up and he got the gun in his hand and so it's just him and gary downstairs and they like we about to play truth or dare bitch what what they they torment what? her with the duct tape on her lips and they draw lips on it. First thing that popped in my mind was Charlie's Angels. Oh, I love you for that. Oh, those beautiful lips. Oh, yeah. Charlie's um, Angels. Give us the rings. <laughs> <laughs> Give us the rings. That Give us was the rings. Charlie's Angels too. Why are you mixing up one and two? I fucking hate you. Um, and so, oh, whatever. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was too, because that was the Irish guy. One was the guy who danced for some reason. The other white um, guy. Yeah, pretty much. And so, um, that's when it gets really uncomfortable for me because they start playing truth or dare and they're playing truth and they're daring each other and he's like touch your boob and it's just he like sexually assaults her and I'm like this is very uncomfortable like mm -hmm. and you know she's like she's talking shit to him she's like it felt like a 12 year old just felt me up like you know she's like she's scared clearly because they have a fucking gun on her but she's also like I know these kids they maybe mm -hmm. maybe they're just like can, you know she's gonna do some shit once she like when she's let go but right. for the most part she's like not completely believing that they will harm her i think you know right. i don't know that psychology behind it because i don't like just babysit kids so i don't know how it feels so i babysit a kid and then they're like holding you at gunpoint so, mm -hmm. um <clears throat> but yeah but yeah. Hmm. so we yeah. discover that i don't know he had her phone in some super rice and now she he can use it now because girl uh, it had only been well i don't know how long homegirl was tired how long is the parents party <laughs> that's okay we have to get there because i mean damn so um he put her phone in some super rice and now it's working completely 
So he texts um, her boyfriend, Ricky, to come over. And so uh, Ricky comes over and he got flowers and shit. It's like weird because he asked him to come over, but then he acting like he don't want him there. And so, you know, they have to duct tape her mouth so she can't scream, even though she's screaming, she's jumping, she's trying to get out. Um, she's trying to get flashlights to flag the neighbors Morse down. Morse code. Doing, yeah, she's doing all kinds of shit. Yeah. Um, so uh, their plan is to give her, they put uh, sleeping pills in the, uh, well, not sleeping pills, they put roofies in the um, champagne and they want to give that to her so she forgets everything that's about to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is always, I'm, I'm like, I'm checked out. Like, it's just too much. So anyway, uh, Ricky there, Ricky got some ugly ass flowers and he like, let me see her, let me see her. So he's like, okay, well, there's, he's like, she's not here. She don't want to talk to you, blah, 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 you know? So Ricky like, okay, well, I'm going to leave the flowers here. And then you just tell her that, you know, I m- missed her lover, whatever. He like, okay, t- pull the flowers through the door. You can tell he's a dumbass motherfucking kid. Ricky bum rushes the door again. These mm-hmm. are fucking 12 year olds. And so he's like, where is she? Where is he? So he's he ran- rampaging through the house, you know, Garrett up in there trying to keep her quiet. So she don't say shit. Bruh. <laughs> that, somehow, Ricky man, he like goes upstairs. He's trying to look for her upstairs. Here come... <laughs> it pisses me off because he was dancing the whole time. Here come Lucas with the bat. Bing! He popped Ricky with the bat. Bopped he his ass. You don't realize he, you're 12 years old, baby. You ain't got the swing you think you do. Ricky come up. He bopped that boy. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky, Ricky wasn't giving him the smoke. He wasn't because, like, he was. Yo, like, I would have, I would have threw. I don't know. I probably would have threw him in the room and then held the door closed. You know, because like, how something. is he gonna open it? How is he gonna open it? Or really, truly, he should have knocked him out. They were play fighting. They were, yeah. you know, he was literally play fighting with him. So he knocks, uh, you know, Luke out a little bit. You know, he has him like, you know, tethered. And so here comes Garrett at the stairs with the shotgun. Like, I'll shoot you. I'll shoot you. Um, and so that's when he's like, okay, you know, he puts his hands up. He, he should have called his bluff. He, he gets on the ground. And bluff. so that's when Luke comes and he actually revs up like Ness from Super some Super Smash Bros. And he really pops him off the screen. And so uh, he's all bloodied and bruised. Um, then he stabs him with the fucking pin on his cheek. <sighs> Do you know how hard? Him. No, so when they were tussling. Yeah. Um, Luke picks up the pen and he stabs him in the cheek with it. And then and that's when Garrett his skin. Yeah. And then Garrett comes upstairs. And then so you know, he when he whacks him that good time, it was just so much blood. That we he, he should have been that, dead. Yeah. And so they pull him downstairs and he wakes up. He all taped up. Do you know so, how hard it would have been for them to get him downstairs? I can't imagine how much then, a 17 then, year old. Then he's he's wide awake. Have you ever passed out before? No, I've never passed out. I've never fainted. I've never been knocked out like that. Okay. So I don't know how so that feels. I haven't, I've passed out from dehydration and I was sick one time. Never from anybody knocking me out, but I'm going to assume. So when you pass out from like dehydration or whatever, I, I fell out, but I was up within like a couple of seconds, like 15 seconds of people like shaking me and everything. When you get knocked out, it's not immediate. Like, they would not have, that guy was clearly like 200 pounds. They would not have been able to carry him downstairs. They would have probably had to push him downstairs like they did Ashley. There's just no way. And and now both of these two idiots are tied up. Both have duct tape. Ashley and Ricky sitting there side by side looking at each other like two dummies. And Ashley, she managed to pick up a piece of glass. Um, From the champagne during- bottle yeah from the champagne yeah. bottle so she ab- she's able to basically untie her or, or cut through the duct tape but it ain't enough slowly slowly um so <clears throat> i don't even so anyway so basically uh they take ricky um ricky pees on himself <sighs> And they call, oh, they call Jeremy. I'm not sure who Jeremy is. I guess Jeremy was maybe Ashley's her ex-boyfriend. ex-boyfriend? Yeah, okay, her ex-boyfriend. so she's so with Ricky now. They, yeah, yeah, they call, they call, yeah, they call Jeremy so he can come over. And um, I don't know why, they, anywho, they call him so he can come over. And so in the midst of all this, um, you know, Ricky's talking shit. So they pull Ricky um, into the uh, living room. Foyer. And they pull him in, the, I'm sorry, yeah, the foyer. And so they pull him into the foyer <laughs> Um, and basically Garrett was smoking weed. And so they get him, they, uh, they put, they make him smoke the weed 
because Luke is worried about his parents smelling the weed in the house. So they're like, we got to get the weed in his system. Then he goes upstairs. He ties a paint can to the banister of the stairs, much like if you've ever seen Home Alone, like Kevin did with the Home Alone guys. And so he plans on hitting him with the can, which is deadly. It's a fucking paint can. And so... um, Especially if it's full. Yeah, and so Ashley's in the midst of um, unhooking herself. She can't get all... She can't get her entire self off of the... um, Chair. chair so she has like her arm still on the chair which i don't understand this part i don't understand why she couldn't just like the it, it looked like a, a very cheap chair it, it wasn't a chair made of metal like i feel like she the duct tape ain't that thick so anyway she got the chair hanging off of her she grabs the gun she's like let him go let him go or i'll shoot you yo i would have shot him this you, boy you know hold on hold on hold on she had time to a shoot mm-hmm. him Mm-hmm. To be jump in the way. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. She had ample time to do that, but she was just she, frozen. Yeah, she stands there while Ricky is pink, like pink. He is popped by this paint can so damn hard. All you see is yellow and all yellow and red. Like he is I, dead. I, they the don't now. show it to us. Um, you know, because I'm sure it's probably really gross, but I felt I think in my head it looked like a hamburger. With a lot of mustard and ketchup yeah, because it was yellow ketchup. paint. Yeah. So yeah, was... I think he looked like a burger, like extra raw, like, ew, who eats a raw burger? Ew. Ew. So, I mean, I'm guessing, um, if we want to get scientific, I'm guessing it hit his nose and, you know, I don't know, went into his brain. I don't know. He's yeah, dead. you know how in the movies, I don't know if it was like a Jean-Claude Van Damme or a Steven Seagal movie, but it's like the push the nose up. You kind of like push the nose up into the brain. I'm yeah. going to assume something of that nature happened. But yeah, yeah it, it just Ooh. was. I know blood. it hurt like hell. So at that point, she uh, he comes down the stairs. She tries to shoot him. That's when he tells her, oh, my parents keep the bullet separate. So it's been an empty gun this whole fucking time. Now, the shotgun's loaded, but the, but the handgun ain't. And I don't know why she didn't grab the shotgun. Anyway, um, but so then she tries to exit stage left. So she run out the, um, she run out the door. still open back door. <laughs> I'm so fucking over it. Like, I don't know if this is a continuing, like, uh, damn it, I cannot say that word. Continuance? Continu- Yes, I don't. I was gonna continuity. Um, that word, <laughs> continuity. There we go. A continuity ah, error. Ah, that but, word. But uh, she she trips over a wire and she sees it's attached to the paintball gun, which is the you know the shot and the blood she saw earlier, which is why she thought Garrett had gotten shot. And so um, she tries to get up. Garrett tries to stop her. She whip his ass like I'm like she has a chair but it's, attached. It's a slow fight. Like it's what the are worst we do- fight. Yo, like she, right here, hate- right here, right here, right here, right here, right here. Thumbs to the eyes and just squeeze, bitch. D- dig it a nose. You're a 17 year old girl. He's <laughs> choke him out. Like kick him in the fucking nuts. Like do send him to sleep. Send him like, to she sleep. She was acting yes. like she couldn't fight him in the snow, and I'm like, so anyway, she manages to get herself free from the chair, but she's you know, she makes it over the um. The fence, she, there are Christmas carolers right outside the house. She tries to run over to them. Bam! Luke done hit her in the head with the fucking brick that we saw earlier. And he hit her so fucking hard, the brick broke in half. How this girl is still alive with all these head injuries, I don't want to know. I like... Child, he- head is bumping. Like, the brick for the brick to break in half, something is... Your skull is cracked. She need a BC powder. So, they done tied her up with duct tape and Christmas lights. She on the couch, just no hope in the world. And so uh, that's when she's like, oh, bitch, you were never going to let me go. You were going to kill me anyway. And Luke is like, yeah. So basically, <laughs> um, uh, Jeremy arrives. And, um, and he's played by uh, Dacry Mont- uh, Montgomery. Soccer le bleu. Um, he's Australian. I hate you. And um, Oh, I only said that because his name is Dacry. I so, like soccer. Le bleu. And so he show up. And um, Luke, uh, Luke is like, Yo, hey. Yo, wait, time out. Why does he look like? Jamie Kennedy in Malibu's Most Wanted. Who saw this movie and said, yes, we want him for Stranger Things? I think they saw Chap- Power Rangers. Traffic, they traffic, Power- looking for my chapstick. I think they saw Power Rangers and that's when they were like, we want him for Stranger Things. He was Things. in the Power Rangers? Oh, I remember. He was the Red Power Ranger. Ranger movie. Okay, yeah, calm the down. Movie. It I- wasn't all that. It don't know justice for that reboot. Um, and so, uh, oh, 
Oh God, Tommy. See, you just made me sad. Um, and only so, Tommy uh, I recognize is pickles. And so um, <laughs> he takes him outside and he sits on the swing. And he's all like cursing. He's very like, yeah, he is very Eminem code. He's like, bro, 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 sup, 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 yo, yo, yo. And he's all like, shut up, my neighbors. He's like, I don't give a fuck about the neighbors. I thought that was part. That part was hilarious. Um, and so he's like, write her an apology letter for all the things you did to her. And he's like, what the fuck did I do to her? And Luke is like, uh, I don't know. You know what you did. So he's asking him to write an apology letter. So um, he's working on his apology letter. Luke is outside. And she, um, Ashley's inside trying to reason with Garrett. And she's like, look, he doesn't like you. He's mean to you. He's just using you. You're going to get in a bunch of trouble. Like, this guy's dead. And Garrett he killed free- your, he killed your, your ger- gerbil or whatever the fuck. Yeah, he killed your gerbil. Like, it's just, she's using, like, a lot of psychology trying to get him, you know, the yes. typical, typical henchman. Like, hey, he don't like you. He's using you. That kind of thing. And she's trying to play to Garrett's conscience because, baby, somebody's mm-hmm. dead now. Like, y'all was right. playing before, but somebody's dead now. So, some shit got to shake. You're an accomplice, bitch. And so uh, Garrett begins to help her. And he's like, you know, I'm going to help you. You know, just, you know, you have to get out of here and you have to run for your life. And so in the midst of uh, Jeremy outside writing this letter, all of a sudden he got a noose hang- hung around his neck. Luke is driving the motherfucking uh, snowplow machine. Or is that just the, um, the uh, lawnmower? Anyway, I'll look- <laughs> riding lawnmower, snowplow machine, something. Mm-hmm. He hanging him with a noose. And baby, it is so crucial because I'm like, there were so many opportunities where I thought he was going to live and I thought it was going to be like, you're like, because they keep playing on the fact that they're kids and they don't know what the fuck they're doing. So I thought right. he was going to put his feet in the swing and kind of maneuver. I don't know. He don't do that. He is dead as a doornail. He hangs. And so here. Um, he leaves a note. So in, in the, in the um, you see the note in the snow and you're led to believe it's like, it looks like a suicide note, honestly. It's like, I'm sorry for everything I did to you. I love you. And you know, it's just sitting there in the snow, which I'm like, why would you leave it in the snow? It's going to get wet and Anyway, I mean, it looks like he wrote it in fucking crayon. It looked so, like an etch sketch <laughs> So, baby, Garrett is almost untying a uh, old girl. Baby, before we know it, Garrett gets blown away into the kitchen. Like, he flies. Luke done shot Garrett. Garrett like, oh, my God, help me, I'm dying. He's like, why don't you touch her? I told you not to touch her. At this point, Luke is, he's been very, like, He's been mostly calm, but kind of immature. At this point, he's unhinged. Like when they start yeah. doing all that screaming and hollering and shit, I don't he's, have a, time for he's it. like a sociopath. So American like, psycho. Yeah. Like Garrett, that whole. Garrett, it's Garrett is sitting there actively dying. He's like, I yeah. told you not to touch her because Garrett, Garrett apologizes to Ashley. He's like, I'm so sorry we did this. I didn't think this is what was going to happen. And he gives her a kiss on the forehead. And that just sets Luke off. And he just goes crazy, shoots him. He's like, Why did you do this? Why did you touch her? I told you not to touch her. And then he ends up shooting him. Yeah. killing him one more shot yeah. he's like fuck and he starts throwing the gun he's like ah, ah! yeah and he was like, he's like i want my mom that was so sad <laughs> and he said i never liked you anyway pretty very much. like i want i'm telling you once they start i do not once the, once these white men start with this whole rah, 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 i'm like uh-uh, i gotta go rah, 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 was, out the door like rah, rah, they be, rah, rah, once the they door. start getting uh-uh baby uh, i don't really don't have time i'm not an american psycho fan i don't do all that shit like once you start mm-hmm. hooping and hollering i'd rather you just remain jeffrey Dahmer about the whole situation do not start that yelling and jumping down shit so Luke but that's is, where they mess up that's when they mess up yeah luke is very fucking unhinged and so now he just sits with Ashley and, you know, uh, she starts telling him this story and she, he's like, and I don't know, he's trying to give, he's trying to give sympathy and she's just listening to him. She crying. She's like, you so, know, I, so he tells the story about girl. his mom mm-hmm. and he says, I rem- basically I have trouble sleeping now. And I remember my mom mm-hmm. used to tuck me into bed and she would cuddle me all night and I fell asleep. It was so easy for me to fall asleep and she doesn't do it anymore. And Ashley hitting him with the reverse psychology again. She's like, I know exactly why your mom doesn't do that anymore. And, and then she just, one, he freaks out again. He, she goes straight silent. She don't look at him. She just straight like, and so this is when he starts that freaking out shit again. He's like, tell me, tell me, tell me. And then, you know, he freaks out for a very long time and then he stands up and he's just like, oh, you ain't gonna tell me, bitch? Baby, he took out that pocket knife, stabs her in the neck. Ashley gone. Blood all over the floor. Like, blood is Bye, all Ashley. over the floor. And so that's when, again, I don't have time for sociopaths. Like, I, like this psycho, the psychopath, sociopath, he, get, he goes full Joker. 
and he starts cleaning up the mess or basically he's covering it up. He's not really cleaning everything up. Baby, you you can you, hear the music in the background, like run, yeah. run, Rudolph, Santa's gonna make it to town and he's just he cleaning is. up. He's setting like, everything up. He's like, you know, uh, he's putting fingerprints on the gun and everything on Jeremy's like, dead bitch, body. Like, you are 12. Gil Grissom will find you. <laughs> you are 12. There's no way that you, who has not gone, you've watched a couple of true crime documentaries. You're not going to make it out, baby. They're going to find you. It's 2017. It's not 1982. I mean, he is having the time of his life. Like, he wants to be Kevin from Home Alone so badly. So, you know, he's... He basically he's framing everything cleaning up the crime scene making it look like uh it was jeremy who uh killed everyone and so uh he even um brushes his teeth he gets into his pajamas he goes to try to put the uh the pencil um on his door because you remember he's supposed to be asleep he ain't supposed to be mm -hmm. outside his room um he's supposed and he took his sleeping pill as well that's noted as well um um and so but the pencil won't stay so he puts the pencil on the door then he goes through the uh another room in the house and he goes out on the balcony while he goes out on the balcony he accidentally knocks over the deers the, the deer christmas lights that are hanging and that's when he realizes oh shit my parents done rolled up the party done finally fucking ended so the parents you know he trying to adjust shit he literally outside while they arriving how they don't see his ass I, anyway movie trope so yeah uh he get in the bed he turned on his little, uh, what the fuck is that? That whale noises he listened to? So it was a, it's a fetal monitor. So it is basically what babies hear when they're in the womb. And um, Garrett makes fun of him earlier. Like, you still use this, you fucking pussy. Well, he doesn't that say that. But he's like, you're a loser. It's like, <laughs> he, he, has, he, has, he has mommy issues. And this is what's making him crazy. He had, he mommy issues is what's making him a sociopath. Okay, Billy Loomis. And so, um... He pretends to be asleep. That's when baby the parents come in. They start screaming. They you know they see the whole thing. The mom like, comes in. She's like Casey, Casey. <laughs> and so she I mean, you know. Yes, I mean Lucas. She, you know she embraces him. She holds him. The police come. Um, um and then she he, like he, gets he finally the cuddle. He gets the yeah. cuddle that he has been longing for. And so uh he finally wakes up and you know they're like you know it's okay it's okay it's okay and um you know the police are getting the statement from the dad you know he's feeling like very proud of himself because he won. That's when all of a sudden you hear downstairs, this one's alive. He looks so defeated in this baby, moment. Baby, he looks so defeated. Baby, baby. He looked, I wish it would have been a uh, paint can kid. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, he looked like. I would have died if it was paint can oh, So they, you see them shit. wheeling out um, Ashley and that's when the exposition, exposition lets us know she put tape over the stab wound, the duct tape over the stab wound. And so that's how she remained alive mind you even if she did do that the blood like there was blood like she was in a love seat and there was blood all over the floor so she lost a lot of blood it, the time frame it took him to clean up get in bed his parents to come home and for the paramedics to get there the fact that she was still alive is completely amazing because she lost a lot of blood right. not right. to mention all the concussions but whatever she's on the gurney he look out the window she see him he see her she flick him off while the paramedics didn't ask anything. Cause I mean, she's literally flipping him off from the window. I'm like, I'm going to assume maybe she's not really able to talk right now because of this and she's getting okay. oxygen, you know, but she ready. As soon as she gets to the hospital, I need a, I need a pen and paper. a paper. Right. And so, you know, he but you know what, you know what? I guarantee you, I guarantee you the parents that he has, they'll still blame everything on Jeremy. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're led to believe, like, you know, once you get to the hospital, he's fucking over in credits. But then they're like, he's like, Mom, I'm worried about Ashley. Can we go to the hospital? Credits. In, in movie. <laughs> in fucking movie. And so I did you see the twist you. coming? No, I literally okay. thought it was just going to be a that house intruder kind of movie. And mm -hmm. then when this shit happened, I was mad. I was mad for the majority of the movie. Cause like with the <gasps> house intruder, with the house intruder, I was like, okay, you know, a killer on Christmas. That's cool. Him just being fucking psychotic for no fucking, like, what was the point in all this? He was psychotic because his mom didn't hug him anymore. What was the point of all this? You killed this girl's boyfriend, boyfriend, ex-boyfriend, her, your best friend. What was the point? He was, just needed a hug from his mammy. You could have said somebody was bullying you at school and she would have gave you a damn hug. Like, it just, I just don't get the plot. I don't get the point. Like, 
he was just he was just he was just crazy he was just crazy like, and you know it was clear that he really wasn't in love with ashley either he mm -hmm. just wanted he just like basically his property to own he he didn't care about her because he wouldn't mm -hmm. have killed her if he did he would have never hit her well i mean i would i would argue the fact that a lot of obsessed people do kill the people that they're obsessed with that's true <laughs> like, but if i can't if i can't yeah. have you nobody else can that's come true. on now you grew up on the bodyguard as well <laughs> You kill them, Frank. You gotta kill them. I I will say, I'm really glad that they did not try to take advantage of her. Well, I thought that like that's what creeped me out. Like I once he's like once he felt her up, I was like, okay, this is weird. Like you know, like so yeah. I was never rooting for him. Like this wasn't even like a, a scary movie where you could like root for the like villain because no, nah. no, I wanted I wanted no. him to lose the entire time. I actually was gonna cuss you out multiple times because a fuck you for this movie, and then b <laughs> I wanted him to lose. And when he started covering up the crime scene, I was like, the movie's almost over. He's about to win. I was gonna be so mad at you. It's gonna be so mad. Aww, because um, I it did not be, want him to win. That's he was very unlikely. People are mad at me all the time. Like he's very unlikable, which pissed me off because I had to look. I had to look up his little short ass. He was in a wrinkle of fucking time and shit. So I'm like, oh, so you a protagonist and everything else, you bitch. Um, I don't man. He pissed me off. <laughs> yeah, he he he. There was no redeeming factor for him whatsoever. Yeah. So, None. Great. It was a great twist. It was something that I was not expecting. Like I, but fuck him. Fuck him. So if you're looking and his for mama a, too, and his mama if, too. So if you're looking for a Home Alone horror movie, here's your Kevin. A fuck like Kevin was already an asshole. He this is guy is just like, oh my this god, is psycho Kevin, psycho like, Kevin. So um, I would give this movie, you know, you know my grading skill. I would say a six and a half, but I'm mm. only gonna give it a six because there's no black people in it. <gasps> they didn't, yeah. They weren't even black people with Christmas carols. Um, Not a one. Okay. I'll, I'll give it. I'll give it a six as well. Yeah. Um, All right. Well. Well, mm. that will do it for uh, this episode. Um, it is now your choice. Mine or the, the viewers. <laughs> uh, I will give time for the viewers to you know. Uh, Email us at booshakalakapodcast at gmail.com or right. hit us up on Twitter X at booshakalakapod and you let can us even know. comment on Spotify. Comment, you can comment, comment. Yeah. We'll take any suggestions. I did do a post. I saw, let me check that post and see what what people said. Let me check real quick. Um, I will say that uh, I'm surprised because once I watched this, because it's on, it's not only on uh, Amazon right now, but it's also on um amc the amc plus subscription i have to watch interview with the vampire but uh jack frost is really it's available <laughs> like i was like oh like a lot of christmas horror movies are on amazon right now for the free so we do have Dark. a lot of a lot of uh pickings yeah i see black christmas okay Gremlins, that's on there that's on there too and dark harvest and krampus there is another Jack Frost too that came out in 2002, but it's like he's like a demon. I mean, like 2002, 2022. Oh, I never heard of that one. It was just like, like right under when I watched uh, Better Watch Out. You know how they, uh, Amazon will be like movies like this. And it was just because there was cramp, like the, it wasn't, there's even a Grinch one. Like there's like a, but he's called like, it's called the bad one or the mean one. There are like a lot of. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've heard of yeah. that one as well. Uh, so, uh out of those what what would you like to uh review next i don't i don't know i'll have to see we'll leave it as a, as a surprise all right <laughs> <laughs> so uh be sure like he said to comment on spotify email us at gmail and hit us up on twitter x and we love to hear your criticism let us know how we're doing um and we will be back next week with there's no name of the movie. I was just doing that part. <laughs> I was doing that part in Pootie Tang when Pootie Tang had his new single and then he started singing. He went like, and everybody was like, this is amazing. This is the best song I've ever heard in my life. So we'll be back next week with, hope to see you then. Nobody likes you. And, well, I think you might be right. Have a Merry Christmas, everyone. And a Happy Hanukkah New Year, Kwanzaa. Bye.